Keepsakes the podcast supports Mr. Speedy. Stay tuned to this episode for a special discount code for your first Mr. Speedy delivery. Uh, without the Reddit post that Jin made, without that stupid comment that sits as the uh, the the cover photo of the bot, <laughs> that um, I don't think the bot would have been like I don't think I would have been riled up enough to have made the bot in the first place. <laughs> This is podcast number 87, Jay Agonipo with Keepsakes. Thank you very much for listening and watching on this special episode that we have here for this time. And as a tradition here at the podcast where we talk with people and personalities who we believe are important in this community, we have with us one of the people who are currently with the Toho, uh, Toyo no Shinju uh, organization of the Ateneo de Manila University, uh, Toshin for short. Uh, he organized, along with his colleagues at Toshin, Fandom February, of which I participated and I really enjoyed it. And also, on the other side, he's also built a bot on Twitter that tweets good VTuber subs and will discuss why this is very important. So our guest on this podcast is Matthew Marcelo, a.k.a. Made Paisen. He is with us. He's part of Toyo no Shinju of the Ateneo de Manila University and the Good VTuber Subs. On this first part, we will talk about the Fandom February, which I participated in. So welcome to the show, Matthew. Hello, Jay. Uh, it, it's it's really awesome to be able to be invited in your podcast. Thank you very much for having me. All right. Okay. So let's start with Fandom February first. Uh, there's always a tradition in every school, in basically any country, to hold its own event uh, about uh, fandoms, especially anime. Uh, the big three or the the big Three. Is it? Is it? How many big schools are there in the Diliman Katipunan area? We there have the UP. Is, we have. Oh, well, I mean, there's Ateneo and UP. And course. Miriam. Um, if we're and Miriam, yeah. Um, if you go outside, of course, you have the U belt. So, of course, you have USD and FEU and all of that. Um, I believe there's also an FEU in QC. I think, if I'm not mistaken. Yeah, somewhere uh, along QC. Uh. Uh, Nicanor, yes, uh, around the Nicanor, yes, medical center area. Yeah, some um, somewhere around there. Yeah. Uh, mm -mm. Pero lat, uh, not all of these uh, schools have their own anime organizations. So we've talked about the UP. They have uh, UP Ame and uh, UP Ame, yes. And the Ateneo has uh, to, uh, Toshin. Toshin, yeah. Mm -hmm. And there are other Japanese uh, organizations uh, around uh, these campuses, but uh, we'll we'll isolate ourselves in the Toshin side of things. So, Fandom February, uh, I would like to know. Of course, I enjoyed it, but I would like to know first what what's uh, what's this Fandom February? How did you made it? And uh, basically, uh, what's the plan? Or is this a, uh, is this an annual thing? Is this a tradition okay so um just to preface of course i uh i am currently uh serving as the um counselor of revenue at doshin which is part of the finance department so you know i that, that's kind of the thing that i do in doshin but on on the other hand like i, I do side projects as well in doshin and fandom february was definitely one of them um, one of the uh, main staff called it like one well, of my pet project, but really um, it wouldn't have been possible without the entire team at Toshin. So yeah, Toshin or Toyo no Shinju is a independent organization inside the Ateneo de Manila University that focuses on Japanese pop culture, which of course includes anime, manga, um, modern culture, life in Japan, um, VTubers included, of course, Japanese VTubers, and a lot of other things so um when it comes to like other camp um anime 
clubs and organizations in other campuses, of course, the most famous one I think is UP Ame. Um, you know, projects like these are super, super interesting because like, for, for example, right, um, I attended a talk before on uh, in, in UP, held by UP Ame, called uh, About Hentai. So <laughs> I, I don't know if I should be starting with that, but that is a, it was a very educational talk. Actually, um, that's what I love about enemy orgs um, or like uh, Japanese culture orgs in different universities that were given the space to talk about anything. Um, and it does have educational value in it. And Fandom February was definitely a, uh, 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 you know, inspired by that. Uh, so Fandom February was, it's a very new event. It only started this year, but even though it started this year, the precursor to Fandom February has been going around for a while now. Um, our org, Sotoshan, has been doing talks on other topics before. So around, um, twen- I believe it was 2019, we did talks on other parts of Japanese culture. So it was Halloween themed. So I think the one, the one that I most definitely attended as a new member of Toshin was a talk about Yanderes which is a very popular topic inside otaku circles. Uh, so that, that was, uh, it was topics like those um, that we, we got our members like interested in, in, in more and more in Japanese culture. And so with the pandemic um, happening, the, the question was, how do we continue that? Um, that, that was a tradition that, that we did. Um, how how do you continue that that practice of educating others more about Japanese pop culture in, in like the Zoom era, right? And so Fandom February was like an answer to that, um, in in some way where we could get everybody who's interested in in something because like I I've you know for me I've been learning a lot about the fandoms that I'm in, and I figured I'm not the only one, right? <laughs> so we we made a a place where people can talk about uh what they're interested in uh, as long as it's related to Japanese pop culture because that's what an org is about right so uh, we we did uh we did four weeks each week has a talk uh, has a couple of talks or a workshop that's related to Japanese pop culture in some way or form so uh, for this year, of course, I, I spearheaded the talk about VTubers, um, which was followed up by topics about Gundam, topics about um, Utau, which is related to Vocaloid, and uh, we did topics about um, anime 3D modeling, isekai, and um, J-pop and K-pop idol culture. So those were the topics that we did for this year. You were, I'm sure Jay, uh, Jay you were around for... All, uh, for a lot of them, yeah, yeah, most of most them, most of them. Of them. Yeah. <laughs> so that it, it was kind of stressful to start a new event like this, um, especially since most of the work was on on my end. Um, since um, in in we were having a meeting actually um, with the Toshin staff in our in one of our monthly, I think it was monthly meetings. We we kind of had this idea out of nowhere. I was mostly the one who was pushing for the idea, but I'm glad that the entire uh, staff at Doshin were really really in on it and like um, want to push this alongside me. So I'm proud that uh, it, it you know it, it got as big as it did. It, it got as um I don't know as a. <laughs> It, it, I'm still overwhelmed by it, really. But it, it, it's amazing that we we enabled um, presenters and, and and attendees to come together to talk about what they love. Okay, so there's a lot of people who attended this uh, online webinar. You streamed this on Zoom, on Facebook, and on especially Twitch. So yep. yeah, how, how's the reception so far? Uh, can you can you disclose the number of the registrants, the ratio of registrants versus the actual attendees? Um, with the, okay, so I like, is it think, one is to two or two is to one? 
Oh, it's a difficult thing to answer because there were definitely there are around there were like fifty plus people who attend who signed up in the registration form, and then for the uh, for the streams, um, it was around half that. How let's say half of who registered were usually on the streams, because um, of course some of the people were in Zoom, so it it was a kind of a splitting point. Yes. Um, there were people who didn't want to sign up, but still wanted to watch and spectate anyway. So that's another thing. But actually, um, for Fan Feb, because it was a new event and all, we weren't really expecting much people. Actually, um, <laughs> funny thing is, f- uh, when we submitted this event to our... Um, to our... Uh, at least the part of Ateneo that handles organization, so what we call the uh, COA, um, we only set like the expected amount of people to register or to join or anything like that at to at least uh, around 20. Mm. Because that's kind of our standard with Doshin events because of course like um, Ateneo is very well known to have like students who are very, very busy. So org events tend to or org culture is weird in Ateneo because like org culture is super active, but at the same time, uh, there's a lot of people who can't commit. <laughs> so they they try to join what they can, but not miss, but not all the time because of course you have exams and you have um, homework and you have like classes to worry about, and that's kind of the difficult part of a uh, of a university organization is that you have to balance, you have to keep your members. Um, you have you have to keep in mind your your members and how they uh, how they manage their time as well in, inside a university that kind of demands uh, quite a quite a bit. So yeah, mm, understandable. But twenty, uh, uh, you mentioned earlier that you had fifty or half of it, and then your standard was twenty. So it's a it's a good uh, it's a good turnaround, I believe. From from what I see, it's a good turnaround. Yeah, it, I will say that my superiors have said that it was definitely successful because like yeah we, we, that was our center it was 20 it like doubled that basically and more because you're not just including like the people who register but also the people who who managed to find the streams in the first place their friends told their friends and there's a, we tried to make sure that there was little barrier to entry like sign up all you needed was to sign a google form via the streams all you needed to do was open up facebook or twitch and it's right there and yes. even yeah. at, even post fan feb we were also trying to edit the vods of the talk so that people who didn't get to attend any of it of them live can tune into the vods mm, more of more of the like the highlights. highlights though more of like the highlights but oh um well, right now we're focusing on having the full talks, ah. just a little bit cut, um, depending on like technical issues and stuff. But and stuff that, um, like the presenters choose not to ninety to ninety nine percent the same as they were from the uh, from the talks, just edited to make it look nicer on YouTube. So yeah. I see. So we talk about the history, the culture, the turnaround, and then of course the content. Uh, of course, we can we can basically talk about the best content so far. I think I enjoyed the first day, uh, the first week, and the last week the most. Basically, it's because VTubers, but we'll get to VTubers. Uh, I'm really happy with how how the in jokes were shown. Uh, of course, those who have seen oh, Final yeah. Fantasy knows the <laughs> in-jokes. But uh, for a brief summary, in-jokes uh, basically still about VTubers. Yeah. So uh, I think... Yeah, I think so, so <laughs> yeah. definitely about VTubers. <laughs> um, I, I, one, one of the in-jokes I talked about on Twitter was like um, how... like. It was around the third week talk where we were talking about um, isekais and idols. And for some reason, this just they brought about the topic of, oh, Made is going to buy a ball VTuber model of Fiverr because we all know the, the 3D anime models on Fiverr are practically 
1% effort, uh, 99% marketing. So <laughs> yeah, it carried on to the fourth week and you're still talking about this. And you're like, stop it. Please. <laughs> <laughs> They're not um, like this emoji. Yeah, They're not just, like this. Not like this. <laughs> not like uh, this. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> not like this. Uh, <laughs> mm. So it, it looks like that. Um, it does make me like uh, super happy that we did this sort of thing and that people were super open and uh, were also part um, joining in the fun of um, you know, of fandom, uh, which we did for fan in FanFeb. Yeah. Mm. So the over the overall experience setting aside the technical difficulties, setting aside the challenges in oh, yeah. <laughs> building or uh, uh, basically streaming every meeting every Friday of the week. So uh, how, how was the experience so far? Uh, was this your first time personally to stream content? Okay. So no, it is not. I have been streaming for a, a while now. Um, I, I used to stream a bit on uh, Facebook and Twitch myself mm. um, as a as someone who plays like games. I used actually I did a bunch of stuff. I learned Japanese on stream a little bit, um, did Photoshop designs on stream and also gaming as well. Um, I think my biggest project was um, a show that I did called Art Nights Live. Oh. And that was a that was a weekly show that I did that showed my progress as I played through Arc Knights, but at the same time it was also an experiment in um, motion graphics a little bit and and stream um stream graphics and stuff like that. So kinda went a little bit all out there uh with an intro and everything. But I I, I started to move away from that a little bit as you know it, it was difficult for me to stream during the pandemic because um things were shifting around the house and so it was hard for me to find any proper schedule to stream so i kind of took a hiatus from that but when it comes to stream tech in toshin i was probably one of the only people who were most knowledgeable about streaming um at least from a, from a technical standpoint um maybe other people have had experience before but only as like a something they did once in a while but for me i, I used to stream like weekly um and i have the tools to design and to uh, set up streams uh which was kind of what we needed for an online event like fan Fe in february hmm. so the force was with you yeah <laughs> in a way yeah <laughs> All right. Okay. So I believe that would be it for my questions about Fandom February. But one last question. Do you have any plans to continue this? I'm, hmm, cause I'm not sure if I should say, uh, well, l look out for it because mm. y you know what they say? Like if, if something good happens once, it doesn't hurt to do it again. You know, and I think Fandom February, out of all of our events at the Ocean, has a pretty good shot of making it in uh of, of having another another one next year. Um, maybe we're thinking about it. Like if if we do this again next year, it's gonna be physical, right? Like we're we're all gonna, you know, do like post pandemic, right? We're all gonna we, get we'll all get our jabs and all. We're all get our jabs, <laughs> and we're gonna go back to the university. So that's kind of the question that we have on our minds now. If we do this, how do we solve the signal problem? Because like signal in Ateneo is kind of sketchy, depending on who your provider is. So oh. um, we, we think about we we we're, we're also thinking about the logistics of that, but. Yeah, I think I think it's got a pretty good shot of uh, making it again next year. So if you weren't, if you didn't manage to catch up to Fandom February this year, I think it's gonna be super excite, uh, super exciting, and like you probably may have uh, another chance next year as well. All right, thank you for that. So that ends our discussion on Fandom February. Before we proceed to the meat of the matter, the actual meat of the matter, let's take a break, and I'll mention you as uh, one of our good uh, recommendations uh, here in the podcast. Let's take a break as I introduce you to Mr. Speedy. 
Mr. Speedy caters to businesses and SMEs by providing dedicated riders and reliable account managers to deliver and ensure all transactions are fulfilled. I've tried Mr. Speedy for select orders and I can guarantee their service, so please try them out. Here's a special deal for all podcast listeners. Get $1 off when you place your first delivery with Mr. Speedy when you use the code Keepsakes MR Speedy. Again, that's Keepsakes MR Speedy. You may book a delivery via their website, mrspeedy.ph, or you may download the Mr. Speedy app from the Apple App Store, Google Play, and Huawei Mobile Gallery. Link is also in the description. Available for Metro Manila, nearby provinces, and Cebu. Keepsakes, the podcast, supports Mr. Speedy. Now back to the show. Welcome back to the podcast. This is still Keepsakes, the podcast. Jago Nipo with Matthew Marcelo, also known as Made Paisen. You know, we all have this okay. liking. <laughs> we both have this liking to Kiryu Koko, the one who changed the landscape of VTubers' interaction with the VTubers themselves. She, she, she's the one, that one dragon, that one bilingual dragon. Dude. That, that, that one bilingual she's dragon. She's amazing. That's I mean, sure. <laughs> very amazing. Now, she's, she's, she's relaxing at this point, so please get well soon. And I will look forward to your Reddit reviews. Reddit meme reviews. Meme reviews. So, uh, before that, uh, uh, of course, uh, setting that aside, we'll talk about VTubers on this segment. So, get ready. This will be a doozy. Let's talk about good VTuber subs. So, uh, as, as far as I recall, the history of good VTuber subs is that there's a Twitter bot named Bad VTuber Subs who posts basically what it says, Bad VTuber Subs. And then you had the list, and then uh, we were discussing this even before, even during Fandom February, that uh, you had the list, and then eventually it will uh, have a new list of uh, uh, verified, qualified, and uh, uh, peer-reviewed, should I say, uh, VTuber subtitlers with uh, with ethics, so that's yeah. uh, ethics also. Ethics is also included there. So, really, how, uh, I don't know if I've asked you this before, but how was the experience of building such bots, such a good bot? As Reddit says, it, they 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 comment good bot. So, how? What was okay. the experience so far? <laughs> good bot. <laughs> okay. So, with good VTuber subs, um, how do I put this? Um, I have experience before with meddling with Twitter to some degree. Um, I remember, I, I, like back in the day, I did. I I once made like a, a Twitter bot that would just like, um, uh, just just nonstop just posted like, my my sleeping habits. So <laughs> so like um oh Made slept for this long at this like at this time and so like it, it was kind of like helping me fix my sleep schedule in a way but then as time went out i was like okay wait this this is a little too personal now um but but it's still around um it, it it's just stopped but like um you can see how it worked back in back in the day and it was like it was kind of it was kind of a funny thing that people were talking to me about so i um i have some experience with like meddling with twitter and formatting i've also done one before where i made a twitter bot for my class once so what we did was like um the teachers would hand out like um their slides to to people because um or at least to a designated person in our class because like as you know like copying notes from the slides tends to be super difficult and distracting like oh you're focusing on writing down notes instead of um, listening to class right and then the difficult thing as a student is oh you're still writing the notes and then the slides switch right <laughs> um so i'm um i once made a twitter bot that every time like something was uploaded to a file server um it would tweet out the uh uh the download link to the file so that my classmates could you know could access that could access the uh, that's a private. Yeah, um, that's a private Twitter bot, ba? No, it's actually it's it, it was kind of public, and the reason for that was one I did like, um, I I don't, 
I don't recall if it was private or public, but I think it was public because one I didn't really think about it too much. It was it was around tenth grade, was it? Or, or oh. around ninth or tenth grade that I did this sort of thing. So Twitter was still like um a a bit like fresh in a way. So like um we were I I guess me and other people were confident that oh no nobody else is gonna see this anyways. Nobody's gonna understand what this is about. Mm-hmm. So um and, and the slides were just like educational anyway. So it's like, what's the, what's kind of the point of making it like uh, private, in in a sense? But um, it it got shut down anyways after after class was over. So uh, you know, uh, that's that's done and over with. Mm-hmm. So yeah, um, yes, I, I've had some experience with, with uh, Twitter in mm-hmm. a way. And so that that falls around of... that falls around in this good VTuber subs, but that you've built and being followed by just how many people. Before, actually, in in FanFeb, it was like around seven hundred, right? It it had just gotten around to seven hundred, and now it is, ooh, somewhere around the eight hundred plus mark. Eight hundred forty-three followers. You can check on. Yeah, checking. Yeah, yeah. Uh, with the uh, seventy-six <laughs> people, uh, you the bot follows seventy-six Twitter handles, mm. and it's being followed by eight hundred forty-three yes. followers. Including uh, this guy named Jin Teramachi, who is very is a very vocal person next to Liger, the Liger. Right. <laughs> uh, me like uh, we kind of joke in the uh, in 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 the hollow translation discussion about how Jin is the one who always likes to make this make uh, make these uh, serious discussions and yes. analyses on uh, on on VTuber translation in particular and. I think he's like as vocal as he is. I think he's doing a very good job of informing other people, uh, VTuber fans, about what translation is like and why you you should be careful with translations in the first place. And I think without the post, uh, without the Reddit post that Jin made, without that stupid comment that sits as the uh, the the cover photo of the bot, <laughs> that um, I don't think the bot would have been like. I don't think I would have been riled up enough to have made the bot in the first place. So it's it's really out of it's really out of the ever loving uh, passion that you have for yes. uh, first and foremost Hollow Life. For sure, um, I've been like Hollow Life was there at a time when I was having a difficult, um, like difficult things were happening around me in life especially with the pandemic especially with um, friends falling out and all of that so it Big was same. super super difficult um and i needed not to mention i was also taking up japanese in university so mm. um i had to find something to listen to lo and behold the uh um there was that one episode of trash days talking about vtubers for ah yeah that, the one uh, about, uh, that oh, was it's, that was it's one a good language before, resource that was one before calliope mori guested right mm-hmm. uh i think it was before that before yeah. that mm-hmm. mm. and oh, yeah most most definitely before that mm. and yes uh, it's a big same for me that Hol- hololive and vtubers uh first and foremost hololive yes saved me from this thing called 2020, no? Uh, <laughs> you know, uh, I discovered that I can link my Google account to like Gcash and to SIM. 25, <laughs> 50 pesos, sometimes Same. 100 pesos. Had a membership for run, uh, which ran for like three to four months for a VTuber, not Hololive. Eh? But yun, yeah, it's, it's really amazing what the, these characters can do at uh, as their other character as the character that we mm-hmm. see online. Of course, given that there are many issues regarding the popularity of VTubers as documented and as witnessed by us Hololive fans, I, for one, have to admit that I am a pro that is being swayed by the antis, especially with all these comments on Reddit and, of course, the diplomatic relations, something that we will never discuss on this program, mm-hmm. at the, uh, especially at this, these as at these uh these times and uh, opportunities at these moments so really it's uh it's also really a high time to rediscover what subtitling can do because there were times that uh, even anime subs were being reviewed by this blog called cry more 
Yeah, Crimer.net. I remember re- them mm-hmm. reviewing anime subs, whether it's good or bad, and they put forward the review. Uh, like, that's it. So, yeah, mm-hmm. this also now runs into the culture of VTubers, in which, uh, as I said earlier, the list that good the good VTubers uh, subspot has is peer-reviewed, and it's peer-reviewed. So it's, uh, it's, it's really a good resource for those who are seeking quality over speed. Because most of the time, of, of course, we discuss this on Twitter. There, there's a whole thread about this. There's a whole there's a thread, whole about, thread this. about this. <laughs> and you wrote, the, you so, wrote the other bigger thread. I was, I, I, uh, as always, it, it brings, uh, it, uh, Jin Teramachi brings me to a point where I have to consider whether this cause really is for the benefit of everyone because most of the time again you're being swayed by public opinion like a bamboo being swayed left to right by the winds of the populace and lalim ng salita ko no really no <laughs> uh, but really yeah. uh, no, that is nga. true mm-hmm. Pero, nga, going back to that thread i'm reading this right now to quote jin himself what i don't get is that these channels aren't official. They're not under any deadline. So if they really care about the girls, why the hell are they spending less than two hours translating clips and allowing simple mistranslations that they could just Google for five seconds to fix? So I quoted that on my quote retweet because if they post fast, they get noticed first. That's YouTube algorithm, basically. In that sense, we have good VTuber subs to remind us that there's better choices. If you still raise this question even now, so this is this is the the, the tweet. Ano? I would like to ask everyone what can be done to amplify the message of good VTuber subs further. Yon, that's that's the one thing I forgot to mention. Further, because there's good VTuber subs. Still, people follow bad VTuber subs. People still follow that one subtitler who's been reprimanded by one of the admins of the Hololive subreddit. It still exists. Mm-hmm. Even if you block them, it, even if you uh, report them, they will still exist because YouTube algorithm. That and also, I guess it's kind of hard to counter the reasoning that, oh, they are still in some way and form promoting the VTuber. And when you take that channel down, you're going to have an army of people being like, hey, what the hell is going on? Right, and it's kind of like a it's it's a very dangerous thing to do at this moment. So, I hate how things have to get worse before something is done. So, um, you know, the the most important thing to do is just really to make people more aware of what's going on and how to resolve this. Um, and how to uh, you know, cause like. The, the, the problem that good VTuber subs is trying to solve, and the reason why it exists in the first place, is because people aren't really aware that there are alternatives. That the same clips that they watch um, is also probably translated by someone else, like, if you give them some time. So, if you wait a little longer, you might be able to find a clip that gets the message across properly and without anything else because um bad translators out there the problem with them is is that they're focusing mostly on like the thing about bad translators is that you know they're mostly just doing it for clout and you know to to get the attention and to get all the views and more dangerously if you get the views there's a possibility that you could be monetizing Yes. Yes. And that's that's the dangerous thing, right? Like even 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 people who don't monetize their videos, they have a donation link at the bottom. Yes. And it does make some sense to some degree, right? Translation is a job and like even if you're doing it as a hobby, it still takes some effort, right? But when you're pushing out clips like a factory and you know, not caring about the talents. And mind you, the dangerous thing about VTuber subs is that it's not like anime subs. Like when that's the dangerous thing right when when people get angry at anime subs they 
Sometimes they, they blame the suburb, but yes. sometimes they blame the studio. They blame the the creators or the producers, but it's not their fault, right? It's a translation because in reality, you should be taking all translations the grain of salt. That's always the advice the translators give, and an advice that I will also ask people to follow because, like, you know, not everybody gets it right, you know, a hundred percent, and. It's much more difficult, especially on solo translators who don't have uh, some sort of quality check, uh, like an eye to, to check these sorts of things. But yeah, the, the problem with, with, with that is like anime subs, you could you know, blame the studio, blah, blah, blah. With VTubers, you're outright blaming the VTuber. You're, the, the perspective that you're getting is that, oh, the VTuber said this. No, they didn't. They didn't say it. The translation said it. The translation is just an interpretation of what the VTuber actually said. Um, because, like, you know, it, it, it goes another person, another human. So, as a result, that includes with it any biases, any um, preconceived notions. And good translators know how to get around that and how to avoid these sorts of pitfalls in, in translation. You know, most of them tend to be otakus to some degree and our Japanese, right? They'll talk about topics that people in the Western world have practically no idea about. They'll talk about weird Japanese memes, weird references, like Japanese references from like the early 2000s or early 90s, stuff from Nico Nico Doga, stuff that like isn't well documented about, especially in the Western world. So how do you carry about those ideas into the Western sphere? And um, that's kind of the, the pitfalls with 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 translating Japanese VTubers and even like something that I plan to do in the future which is like to translate Tagalog VTubers that's also a difficult thing that I have to worry about what about Tagalog memes and um, things that don't quite work well in English right so for example um, people in lo- here locally we know about the word like um, kilig right that is there's no English equivalent for that you have to find a way to go around it um, to get the idea across in, in the same way. Uh, and then you have Taglish to worry about as well. It's things like that, you know? In that case, uh, as far, uh, because, okay, my, my standard of uh, VTuber popularity is the more clips you have, the more popular you are. So with, the, with this in mind, if the quality of the clips are bad, the impression could be as bad as the mistranslation that has happened and there are incidents where for example uh we'll name a hololive vtuber or uh, let's let's uh yeah hololive vtuber vtuber r has said this her message has been mistranslated into this and then boom the the, the public's talking about it as if uh she's at fault so those are real life cases and mind you, VTubers, virtual YouTubers, they're producing unscripted anime without subtitles. It, is just, it's, it just happened in, uh, before in the anime industry. There are a few instances that you can ad-lib your scene, but that's for basically 3D uh, series with 3D graphics and all. But this is VTubers. These, these are VTubers. So in that sense, we really share the same page that I, for one, as a viewer, want to see what the character, the persona, persona behind it is really talking about. And at the same time, on the subtitler, you put your name on that stake. Uh, you put your name and credibility on stake at stake. So... Uh, I think that uh, I think it takes two to tango to really go with the this kinds, but some so just some uh, notorious uh, personalities, bad actors, bad actors have been working against this, and they only care about speed. There's one case uh, again. We we will go back to that one subtitler who has been reprimanded by one of the admins of the Hololive subreddit, and there's this other issue wherein a full VTuber video was translated. No problems. Uh, there's, a, there's, there's supposed to be no problems about that. But when you upload that full footage, 
on YouTube and you only added the subtitles on the line, I do not think that cons- uh, that's still a proper use of the fair use clause. Tama? Yes. It, the, um, for, it, for this case, it was the... Um, I think I can specify this was the, uh, the Mamatsuri stream. Mm. Um, and even before that, they did the exact same thing with a stream with... Um, I, I can't remember. Um, what was it? So it was the Mamatsuri stream with Tamaki that got first taken down by Norio. Oh. And then there's the second one, which was taken down by Hololive, which I think was a collab between Matsuri and Kiara. Oh. If I'm not mistaken, those are the two um, translated streams. If, for those who have, ex- have experienced before, I think you might know which um, translator or translation group I'm talking about. But yes, that is against covers guidelines that is against fair use um, fair use clause. Um, th- that's always the argument, right? With with people making translations, is that oh, I'm putting so, so I'm putting something new to the table here, which is my subs, which is my translations, right? But is it really something new to the table when you're really just it, it's all based off the content that you're trying to to subtitle? And mm. I do I do not think it counts as fair mm. use content. Mm, content is different from context, definitely, and the context is uh, the uh, the the one dangerous uh, fat path, a uh, path na we uh, that na most uh, if not all uh, translators or subtitlers take the context of it. So the the ones on the good VTuber subs list, the responsible ones, will I'll call them responsible because they're responsible for their own content. They're responsible for their own for the context that. The, they relay from the VTuber to the audience, especially with the non-Japanese speaking, non-Japanese understanding audience, like me, who only relies on clips because I have short attention spans. Uh, we, have, we have short attention spans. Definitely, it's, it's, it's never and a joke. Not everyone has time to watch streams. You yes, know? definitely. It, those are that's, hours that's, long. Absolutely. So, we, um, in terms of context, right, I, the, the, VTuber, uh, the translators that are on the list, are people who actually do care about the VTubers because that's why they started this whole thing in the first place. Is that one they understand that, um, especially from advice from people like Liger and Jin, right? I mean, I'm quoting Liger here. As far as your viewers know, what you write is what the VTuber said, right? That's a big, big responsibility that you have to worry about. And so as a result, um, good translators have to keep in mind that mistakes should not happen and that if they are there it's your job to re-upload it's your job to fix the subs and all of that and um it's uh in terms of context I, these are these people are legit oshis um liger like, is definitely a matsuri oshi oh yeah liger is definitely matsuri oshi jin is a okayu oshi um, okayu oshi yes of course of course as their top top oshi they will not uh, put blood in their hands and misrepresent their Oshi to the public. Yes. Have you noticed that bad translators are often the Dare Demo Daiskis or often the people who just translate anyone? Particularly if a big event happens, like a collab or like a uh, some, uh, something, something like a 3D live or anything like that. You ever... Uh, you, that's something that I kind of notice a little bit, and I think it, I think that's that... uh, I think that's an op- that's supposed to be an open secret. But the more I think about it, yeah, it's kind of surprising, given the fact that I did uh, I did a clip with uh, Pavoli Arain. This is without subtitles because Holo Live Indonesia. So I I, right. I did, and yes, it it really raked in the views on the channel. To, to be very quite honest, this it surpassed mm-hmm. MNL48 in Tutupan <laughs> as one of my top videos on my channel. I see. So number yes, one, like... Pavoli Arene and uh, Gochi Mama, uh, Pochi Mama, yeah, Gochi Mama, Pochi Mama, Pochi and Mama, then yes. the MNL48. That's the top two videos on the channel. But moving back to that, I that, that's the biggest impact. Uh, it's it's it, it the the num if you're in the numbers game. You will really easily notice that. Hey, I could make more clips of this. And, then, and hey, if I turn on monetization, 
Hmm. <laughs> diba? <laughs> you know? Mm. Yes. As someone who doesn't um, believe in monetization in YouTube, simply because I don't really see a point where I would like to make it that uh, make that uh, YouTube thing as my work. And uh, it's still, it's, this is still my hobby. Given in that perspective, I see these people on my perspective as something that they have they they they, f- they have to feed for themselves. Yes, but at what cost? Exactly, at at what cost? You, it's you have to think about this in terms of ethics, in terms of art. Can you be the bigger person in the in the in the situation? Can you hold off? Like I know, like people want to support their VTubers, and that means things like subbing, right? Because you wanna bring your VTuber to a wider audience. You want this this thing that, like, y- even if you have some knowledge in japanese and then you you look at this thing that's like super funny and you want to share that with other people like it does make sense right it doesn't make sense the the urge to translate i have that as well with the galag vtubers like i want to share that with a wider western audience but at the same time it's it's a big like it's always the thing that rings it's a, it's a big responsibility and you have to be prepared for it and oftentimes um some sometimes the advice is not oh you should be doing this and that sometimes the advice is don't translate not right now not at your level don't do it not right now because you're not ready when people say that sometimes the attitude is kind of like a bit rude like you'll think that oh they're just trash talking me oh they're just being mean but not exactly it's more of like we're just trying the number one priority is the vtuber and that should always always be the case is that you're doing this for the creator so if you're not good enough to do it then why are you still doing it like there are plenty of other people who can do it for you do a better job uh, than you and at the same time while they're doing that it's now up to you if you really want to continue this. It's up to you to learn more and to study more, to study up on your linguistics so that given some time, you can actually improve and be at a level where you can translate properly. And I say this with any degree. I don't, I don't study translation. I'm studying computer, computers and tech and all of that. But I understand that in, in, in any um, specialization, when you don't have the creds, when you don't have the license, and when you don't have the knowledge, then why should you be meddling with something as dangerous as like um, interpretations and subbing? In the same way, like if you don't have a license, if you don't have like an engineer, like an electrical engineer license, why am I gonna give you the keys to the house to meddle with my with my wires, right? Like I'm not gonna do that. I know better <laughs> than not to do that, right? Um, but yeah what i i think what the especially i don't know because like people have this sort of like perception that like the the big translators out there the ones who are actually genuine about it are elitist when they're really not they just you know are just as con- concerned uh, about the vtuber as like um the biggest fans out there they are the biggest fans because like it's uh it's hard work and like it takes a certain amount of like energy and like desire to be able to keep doing that consistently um whether it's by yourself or with a group uh with a team um you know these things should be taken seriously and you shouldn't let your your biases get in the way of making making good translation Uh, yeah Mm. In, in that sense we'll go back to the question since bad vtuber subs are still there how do we educate people on picking good vtuber subs not just a bot but basically how to pick quality over speed i i we understand that uh, from from even from your tweet uh made by said youtube is a bad platform for translations they this they just remove the feature for others to upload closed caption subtitles so it's now uh, in the hands of the creators themselves to subtitle their content themselves. If the, the thing is, there's that there's this big language barrier. 
between Japan and the world, the rest of the world. Of course, you can just uh, you can just rely on cool Japan and all that. Cool Japan failed, in my opinion. Cool Japan <laughs> oh failed, gosh. in my opinion. I would I will outright say it, okay? Cool Japan failed, in my opinion. What happened to like uh, the the specialized Japanese TV channels that's running on USA? Are this are they still running? That's mm-hmm. that's one case. So, but moving forward, uh, moving forward. Uh, you mentioned last uh, on your tweet last time, like uh, no. Um, let me quote this uh, one of your tweets. Uh, number six out of nine. Then again, no platform is uh, even with anime fan subs. People torrenting choose speed first before waiting for a fan sub to do it. Like, which is going back again to the history that we had. There's bad anime subs. There's good anime subs, and then there's rips from hmm. uh, from yeah. the big big shot uh, uh, streaming platforms so yeah going again going back to the question before we cap up this discussion what can I do to propagate the formula this the funny thing about this like the the other translators discuss as well is that you see on comments like oh I didn't know this translator was bad I thought they were good ah <laughs> that's the problem right you can't possibly know unless you know the language and when you know the language you're not watching translated clips you're watching kirinukis you're watching like the, the clips from japanese natives and um that's kind of the funny thing right um i th- talked about this on the same thread as well i have one of my good friends who was way into vtubers before i was and they were still posting clips from this um from this bad translator yes and it it dawned on me that like this is a difficult problem to solve because anime fan subs they got away with it like the, the problem kind of solved itself in a weird way um basically what happened with the anime with anime fans uh, uh, with anime subbing in general is that i'm sure everybody knows about horrible subs uh, most people in the otaku community are well aware of that they're not a translation group actually they are a group that rips subtitles from Crunchyroll, from Netflix, yes. from translators who are actually paid by the company, um, by the, the anime staff, to translate it in English, uh, into English. And as a result, the overall quality of subtitles inside, um, inside torrent sites um, like Nya and Pirate Bay have dramatically increased because they just take they just go for the rips because that's what the that's based off what the company is is sending right um rather than risking it on a on a bad fan sub but then they get it wrong too sometimes the problem with with um anime subs especially from rips coming from companies is that they don't 100 percent understand the context of the subs that they're making and can also be subject to mistakes which then lead to um, fan subbers, you know, fixing that. And also, they're not styled. So it's also a user experience problem where the subtitles are basic as hell. And as a result, signs don't get translated. Um, s- character speech is like, there's, there's a bunch of things that fan subs can solve, and they still do to this day. And um, that's why I would still choose fan subs over official stubs if they're available because the quality has just overall increased the drama of whatever was happening back then has mm-hmm. died down and there are actual standards now that um groups are subject to and that like um they will 100 percent do because like um big anime fan sub groups or the well-known ones they have processes now for these sorts of things and some vtuber translation groups also try to do the same thing which is good uh, is that they have this sort of thing for like quality checking. You have the, the translator, the typesetter, multiple rounds of quality check. And I think that should be something that we should bring across um, throughout the entire sphere. Big translation groups, like the ones that I can definitely name because they're good at it. So for example, um, Yamete Kuda Subs, um, Aonaha. Oh, no, uh, yes. we, 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 um, we're on the same page with Aonaha. Uh, 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 because uh, as far as I've been told, they are quality checking everything that even if I think they, they don't even <laughs> let pass a single mistake. 
there's this in joke going around Aonahara, especially during the time when they were making a Hollow Life, uh, a Hollow Life Rewind, Hollow Rewind with Hollow Life Resort subs. Another one that also, I think their tagline is like paranoid quality checking. <laughs> yes. Um, Hollow Life, Hollow Life Resort subs. The Resort, or, or AKA um, the Resistance. Uh, now the Resort. AKA the Resistance. Hora Rive Resistance. Um, but yes. Um, so yeah. Uh, there was this in joke going around Aonahara that all the people in the Aonahara team are stuck in a basement working on a, on Hollow Rewind. It, it's funny because sometimes they 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 there was that one time where they where they like flooded the uh, the translation chat in the main uh, fan server. <laughs> they were like, please <laughs> get um uh get us out of the basement <laughs> yeah, and stuff like that. <laughs> um, it's it. it, it, it it is that's how like they joke about it but that's how hard it is to set up these sorts of projects and um to be able to represent the future in the best way possible it takes a little more effort a few more hours of work but it does get appreciated and it's something that i wish all translators can um can push forward to I think uh, I think on that end, I'll uh, try to answer my, uh, the question that we have here. With uh, how do we propagate the formula? We will promote the good VTuber subs, not just the bot, but the sub uh, the good VTuber subtitlers as well. And we can we can at least a lot of space. We have resources to promote them. So yeah, I'm I'm actually open for anyone on uh, any sub if they're okay with keepsakes as a website mm -hmm. uh, i have ad spaces like that maybe maybe i can put maybe. some good yeah, vtubers that maybe that's that's another yeah, lesson but, um... and then another blog post about that list or uh, let's continue <laughs> tweeting good vtuber subs continue retweeting good vtuber subs because on a marketing standpoint we won't stand a chance if you don't do something we won't stand a chance uh, with uh, bad uh, VTuber subs because bad VTuber subs care about speed. We have to fight speed mm -hmm. with think... frequency. At the, in this case, um, how how about your how about your end? I think um, because that, that's what we can do, right? Like we, resources and stuff. But I think that for everybody, for literally everybody. The best thing that you can do is to just share the clips in the first place because VTuber fans will pretty much just watch any clip that comes around their way, you know? Yes. Um, it, it's it's a matter of the choice, really. Because the problem that I find with the quality subbers is that um, they're not well-known, right? So they only get like less than 1,000 views, um, sometimes around like 10,000 and stuff. But that doesn't compare to the hundreds and thousands that, like, um, the big the the bigger speed channels get, right? Because like they're they're, you know, once a stream is over, people will usually start waiting for the clip and then just immediately jump on it, right? Um, but it, it it is a thing that like, we just need to keep sharing it wherever we are. So for example, like. Um, in in my like in a personal Discord server that I'm with my friends, we have like a specific Discord channel where we just send each other clips um, from YouTubers. And while they're posting, my friends are posting the speed ones. I'm usually the one guy like posting all the ones from from good VTubers. I was from like quality subverse that I'm I'm well aware of. And um, it it also like um, it's also a call to arms to the translators themselves that. Um, they do have a shot. Like Good Future Subs is this platform where um, it, it's on a Twitter feed, right? So it's like um, it's easily shareable. It like comes out on the spot, and it's like it's a feed. So it, 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 you know it, it's there when it's there, and you can easily click on it, and then it, you know it, it, it pops up on YouTube. And there you go. You got a you go, you got a view, right? Or at least people have seen your thumbnail, people have seen your title, people have seen your channel title, and they're aware that you're on the list, and they're aware that oh, these these do exist. Because, uh, like as I as I said before, there people out there have no idea that these channels exist. Um, there's that quote that I always like to bring up that I'm always mad about. Like, who are the alternatives? 
bruh, they're right there. <laughs> you just you just have to look for them. They're right. They're always there. You just have to look. Do we have them. to spoon feed? Do we have to spoon feed to everyone? Because yeah, sometimes to... there are people who love to spoon feed. <laughs> no, but like um, it, sometimes a little bit of spoon feeding is what you get, what you kind of need. And then you pick up the pace from there. And then it gets spread around. I'm pretty happy with the with how the bot is going in terms of analytics and um it, it's not exactly a, a big thing just yet but um accounts like bad vtuber subs and good vtuber subs are like you know it goes to show that translation is a very fickle thing that it's not as easy as it seems and that it's easy to get it wrong and it's hard to get it right and that um you the you know everything may not be what it seems um that's kind of the job of the 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 personal side of the bot as well i will take over the bot account from time to time to reply to people who say that oh what about this translator and then i'll tell them ah here's the proof that they're not, <laughs> that uh something something might be up with them because um i used to be part of a of a speed subgroup before actually i used to proofread for uh, a, a speed subgroup before I only did like one or two clips for them and then like they, they have weird management basically and we were talking about it in the in the main fan server and then people and the other translators were like mortified <laughs> by what was going on there was so much radio silence and all of that and um, it, it, you know things like that and I I see now that like these things do happen and um you you gotta look out you you gotta you gotta look out for them you know it, it's not they're they're asking about these sort of translators like oh they should be added to the list and i'll tell them this is why they're added, getting added to the list. this is why they're not getting added to the list even the the, the funny thing is that like n even if they're not in good v in the good vtuber subs list they're not necessarily bad they just lack some things to make them be on there so things like quality checking because they're solo translators they're focusing on getting at least the gist of it right but then fail on some aspects like english quality checking uh there's a there's an official translator um for uh for sorry there's 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 a uh, not not official there's a good uh, a good subber out there um for coco um, his name is Felix. He's super active in the Coco fan Discord. But um, even though he gets like he gets the message across right, there's still issues like um, the English quality checking. Like for me, like I I, uh, I proofread English all the time. So when I see stuff like this, um, like misspellings and all of that, that irks me a lot. Um, but like they're they're they're. Um, they have the translator role in the in the fan discord and uh they're they're super cool they're also they're all um felix is also a mod for coco from time to time um ever since like she started opening up um mods to to uh uh long time fans and it, it's things like that right just because they're, they're not there doesn't mean they're bad but uh it, it, uh the the most important part really is to do your own research and to like um try to find these clips and even even if you're watching speed subbers the most important thing to do um is to just have take every translation even from the good subbers uh take all of them with a grain of salt because mistake hu mistakes and human errors do happen all the time it's just that for some people it happens more often than others and the main difference is the ethics what's their you know what's their driving force behind translating vtubers is it the money is it the 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 clout or is it the actual intent that you should be having which is to promote them to a wider audience in the best way and in the in the uh in, in a way that represents them accurately Mm. As an advocate, uh, basically. Sorry. As an advocate, uh, so do we have this advocate detractor thing where advocates promote that they're they uh, who they who they like, and then there's the detractors who do not uh, promote, uh, of course, who do the opposite, who 
uh, give uh, who puts on the table something that uh, they don't like so that you don't you won't like them so something like that they're advocates and detractors even in vtubers and uh, the fan translators who are responsible enough to promote to, to advocate for their oshi uh that's those are really commendable people because they share their time and resources and they don't they, they don't hesitate to double check they hesitate yes. to put push that publish button to push that button right away they has, that's the only i think that's the only thing that they hesitate about and then yes that hmm. that that is true because you see the speed subbers out there they make like these gr- mistakes Zoom. that are super weird yeah there's that there's that one translator out there where like the entire video is zoomed in a little bit and it's like how did that happen what are you doing with premiere and then um you have people out there like the the translation group i was in before Mm. the speed sub group i was in before they the reason i didn't recommend them especially was like there was that one time where they left in like notes in the uh not dl notes but rather like um mistakes in the subs where you can tell this was still supposed to be like uh, in the staff room being checked because mm-hmm. they have all these like like um, uh, these weird tags that are supposed to be for quality checkers to to, to check right like and then it DK got or in. slash n or something like that. No? That yeah, no, just the, like for example, the word it's supposed to be replacing is with the word that is replaced with. So like <laughs> like the, the the double word things like things like that. Um, or, or like um, it's like to happen, and they don't bother to re-upload. It's been, it's still there, actually. Yeah. Um, All right. Okay. So uh, on that end, uh, we're having a good time. We actually surpassed more than an hour in our discussion. So it's just that uh, Machu has muted his mic, so he's. Uh, yeah, I, I'm I, still here. Are you still here? <laughs> you got <laughs> cut off midway. <Yeah. laughs> Yeah, uh, background noise is a is a thing as well. But, yeah. All right, okay, but but yeah, moving moving forward, I think uh, that's the possible ways we can push forward uh, good VTuber subs or good VTuber subtitles in general. So yeah, we had a great discussion about fandom and more on VTubers. Thank you very much, Matthew Marcelo. Where can we find you? Okay. So of course, like, uh, um, actually, I forgot to mention this earlier. You call me Made Paisan all the time, yeah. and like it's kind of like the funny thing because I, I like I like the word Paisan because it's a play on Paisan. Word, like, and like at the Paisan, yes. Uh, but actually, dude, like you, you're pretty much the senpai around here, actually. <laughs> Not me. Um, I'm still in uni, bro. <laughs> bro. Uh, but yes. <laughs> bro, you can you but, can do uh, these uh, bots. I can't. <laughs> yeah. Um. But uh, yeah, I really I just really like Bison as well. But yes, um, I can be found on Twitter at Madekujiji underscore San. Um, you can find some of my other web projects on um, madekujiji.github.io. Yes, yes, uh, I, I do a bunch of web projects all the time. So one thing that I did for the Coco fan server was a, pro- a collab project with me and another person there called the uh, Coco Dex, which is an index of. Uh, songs that uh, Kiri Coco has covered, so like you can track, um, you you can like easily browse uh, the covers that he did in, in one page. Of course, it was an inspiration from other indexes before for like for Kanata, for Watame, for Suisei, um, and, and uh, so that was a, that was a fun project that we that we just finished up. Um, but yeah, good VTuber subs as well. Good VTuber sub uh, at good VTuber subs. Um, it's it, uh it's peer reviewed in a sense but like most of it was mostly my editions it was just a matter of <laughs> seeing if any of the other translators complained because they did take a look at it um when it when it was uh, up when it only had like 30 30 people and then i started adding more as as uh, as new translators came onto the scene and double checked their subs with other translators it was like ah a new translator that actually cares. Let's add it to the list. So things like that, and yeah, um, that's where to find me. Um, I also do stuff IRL, so you can find like my personal stuff uh, uh, over at www.matthewmarcello.me or that me, um, and at Mashu Marcelo. I mostly do like um, personal local 
stuff there a little bit activist but that's that's kind of the, that's kind of what you do in in university and yeah but if you want to follow me for just for otaku and vtuber stuff you can find me over at at, at matikuchi underscore san you also have this holo kalku on your github page so people can check that out because i'm also interested in what the hell uh this was for this is made for simps <laughs> this is really made for simps man <laughs> um And you said you it, will be it, developing it's this It's also further. made for, like... <laughs> yes, it's also made for math nerds like me a little bit. Like, I, I suck at, like, college math. But, like, when it comes to things like um, like compiling stuff together and, and, and data stuff, uh, that's sort of my, my thing. And when it all relates to finance as well. Um, so I like the I like this sort of thing. Um, so Holocalc is an app. It's a, it's, right now, it's a Google Sheets spreadsheet where like you could tick a few boxes and it'll tell you how much your membership will cost how much your super chat will cost how much it'll cost you per month if you keep using the memberships if you have multiples of them um it's mostly just for people with actual disposable income and yes. for people who want to plan their their memberships right now it's not i still have to update it um because a bunch of new people got new me- got memberships around mm. um so like people like uh Uh, ASCII and Sora opened up their memberships recently, I think, because uh, yes. before um, Sora had her membership on Nico Nico Doga, ASCII had her fan box on Pix, uh, Pixel fan box, mm. and they recently opened up the YouTube membership, so I'm planning to add that as well uh, into the spreadsheet before migrating it over into a proper um, web project, because right now it's not. I'm still like um, learning a lot about Uh, about these sort things, I'm I'm getting there. Just give it some. Just give me some time. I, 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 uh, I'm gonna get around to it once. Um, because uh, I'm also in charge of um editing as well. I have a lot of work on my hands. I, I'm also editing. You're uh, spreading yourself too thin, like me, yeah. Monster <laughs> fan <fan-fed. laughs> Yeah, yeah. Mm-hmm. It, it's it's kind of it's, it's pretty very busy. And um, um, the last thing I want to plug is if you have Discord. Check out the translation discussion in 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 VTuber fan servers because you'll find that um, you'll find a lot of in jokes. You'll find a lot of like interesting things about translation that you may not be aware of. The danger of that is that your standards may go up higher, and as a result, it'll become difficult to watch speed servers. But um, but they think that's the purpose. Is, it is super interesting when you learn a lot more about translation. Yes, that's the purpose. As I say, like you have to get your standards a little higher. Of course, um, yeah. Um, it, it's also a place for you to know more about translation because the no, the more you learn uh, about translation, the more you'll find that these things are not always as easy as it seems. Uh, especially if you're are starting a person trying to start translating, a person who are, is already translating. Because um, like I myself, like I'm aspiring to translate. Um, stuff in the future um that's why i'm studying um japanese that's why i am um trying to figure out tagalog to english translation as well um but yeah it, it it's nice to and also um n- people who know about the good vtuber subs account don't really check out the website or the the notion pages where a lot of info is also compiled on that as well so if you go to good feature subs.github.io it's also there on the on the twitter account um you'll find a lot of resources there to get you um um to to inform you about the sphere of vtuber translation so <laughs> i compiled a bunch of like readings from liger engine there as well so you'll find their stuff um linked on the site Also, if you want to read through like, um, case studies on other um, translators or just translation in general. And also more about the history and the tech behind good VTuber subs and how the whole project works. Uh, I just hope more people are aware about not just good VTuber subs as a bot or the cider, uh, the project, but also as a concept that um, there are alternatives out there if you just look for them. They're, they're, they're there you know you don't have to always listen to the algorithm alright so with that said thank you very much that has been 
Matthew, Marcelo, and uh, also known as Made Paisen. I, I really like bobbing to Coco's head movements, no? <laughs> right. All right. Past episodes. Uh, past a- kusa. <laughs> yes. Kusa. Uh, kusa. All right. So, again, uh, thank you very much. Kusa. Thank you very much for listening to the podcast. And again, past episodes can be viewed on jagonoy.xyz slash podcast, youtube.com slash jagonoy, and anchor.fm slash keepsakes. Once again, jagonoy po, keepsakes. Stay safe and thank you. God bless. Thank you. Bye-bye.